Hi, uh, I'm Chip Goldie, and I am a director. Um, some people call me. Um, um, have we got? Is this? Have we got a sound problem here? Is this okay, Paul? Is this okay for you? We'll live with you, it. Okay. Um, I mean, because I don't want a problem later. That's the thing. I just don't want to be. I don't want to be sitting in the. You know, in post Price, screaming Price, take at somebody. Take care of that, please. I am a director. Uh, some people call me a, a maverick, uh, explorer, uh, auteur, um, trailblazer. But I just figure I tell the truth as I see it. Uh, you may have seen some of my documentary work. Uh, I did one called uh, Under the Weather, which was a, an expose of uh, TV weathermen, you know, the secrets behind their chirpy facades. Uh, I also did one called uh, Congressional Aides, uh, Helpers or Hookers. Uh, I don't know, you, m you might have seen that. That was, uh, got nominated for a, a Cable Ace Award, actually. Yeah, I mean, it was nomination for, you know, best sound, but, uh, but you know, I really, you know, I stood on the song guy, I said, you know, record stuff. And, uh, you know, so that, that I went up. At any rate, I want to talk for a moment about uh, the modern phenomenon that is the Relativity 3. What is with these fucking wind chimes? What, uh, who, uh, are, are we, you know, in Marin County here? What's going on? Can somebody lock down the wind chimes, please? Or just, can we just stop the wind? But let's talk a moment about the modern phenomenon that is the Relativity 3. With their mega platinum success, these three women have built a reputation based on familial harmony, high morals, and uh, brightly colored outfits. They have built a, a huge reputation for uh, goodness and stability. Uh, with their flawless skin and smooth vocal style, these three women have basically knocked Madonna, uh, Michael Jackson, e even Billy Ray Cyrus right off the pop charts. It would seem like they can do no wrong. Or can they? Have we fucking got that, guys? sometimes I'm not so good. Any good team needs a good visionary behind them. That's why they signed with me. My God, they sang to keep themselves alive. That's close. That's close. Let's, Let's try it one more time. Okay. Two, three, four. I have two dogs, Benjamin and Michael. But after meeting the girls, I thought, well, to hell with all that. There's a lot of angry people out there. Sometimes I'm not so good. Oh, shoot, I'm sorry. Oh. Let's just try it one more time. Well, sweetheart, you know something. You really weren't that fat. My father is no drug dealer. Mother Teresa, sometimes I'm not so good. You only see the, the final product, the, the pearl and the oyster. These girls had to shuck a lot of shells to become the beautiful, sophisticated young ladies that they are today. They come from a broken home. Their mother wandered from city to city, man to man. They clung to each other for support. They sang to, to relieve the pain. My God, they sang to keep themselves alive. My first husband. <laughs> oh, what a cat. He was wicked, but cute. He was a football player in Notre Dame. Every girl who ever laid eyes on him wanted him, but I was the one he wanted. We got married very, very young. In fact, I got pregnant right away. I'm sure it was the first night of our honeymoon. And then India was born. Oh, it was a difficult, difficult birth. She had a big head, but she was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And then, of course, you know, that teenage thing happened, you know, where uh, every one of them always goes through. She's just now starting to come out of it. It's not that I don't get along with my mother. It's, it's just that we were never that connected. She always favored Summer. You know what I think, Summer? I know what you should do. I think aside from the act, I think that you could be a top model because of your beauty. Beauty is from within, Mother. Um, Jane, the middle child syndrome, a loner, you know the type. <laughs> she was never as outgoing as Summer or India. And she also had this little weight problem. 
I tried everything in the world I could to improve her self-esteem. I sent her to fat camp three years in a row. Do you know how expensive that is? Of course, I myself never had that problem. She inherited it from her father, Marty Shekel, the attorney. I just let them talk, you know, hog the spotlight. Never bothered me. Daddy always said I was his little pumpkin. When they divorced, I wanted to live with him, but Mother wouldn't have anything to do with that. She dragged us up to this commune up in Oregon to live. Well, you have to understand, it was the 60s. Love, peace, all that. And I was a young woman raising these two little girls all by myself. And I, I did get alimony from my two ex-husbands, but oh, I wanted a simpler life. And that's when I met Running Bear. He taught me things I'd never known before. He was a Native American shaman, Sean. We took peyote, peyote, and we exchanged vows in a ritualistic blood ceremony. It was really very sweet. And the product of our union was summer. I think I would have stayed with Running Bear the rest of my life if it hadn't been for the FBI. Well, my father's case is still on appeal. We did some benefits to help pay for the lawyer's fees a few years ago. It was all a setup. They planted 40 kilos of crystal meth in his teepee the fall of 75. My father is no drug dealer. I mean, sure, he used peyote for religious purposes, but speed? Come on. It was a witch hunt. The FBI stormed in, wearing gas masks, carrying assault weapons. They bulldozed the TP down. Many people think that this was all handed to them on a silver platter, but I gotta tell you something, they couldn't be more than wrong. These girls worked long and hard. They had a struggle. I love them, they're beautiful. They're my children. No one can take this away from them. No one. When the girls were little, they were always singing and dancing and jumping around the house and making up little shows and putting them on and whatnot. And so I got the idea to enter them in a local talent contest. I think it was when India was around 10, something like that. And well, they came out on stage and they just sang and danced their little hearts out. <laughs> they were so cute. They didn't win. They didn't even place, but I got first prize, a blue ribbon for the costumes I made for them. They were absolutely adorable. They were the little uh, uh, pinafores with matching hot pink pants. <laughs> the girls hated them, but not the judges. We knew what we wanted to be about from the start. Yeah, to have a positive influence on people through our music. But maintaining a light and airy feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, Raw Raw Town is the best way I could describe it when they came to me, oh, about five years ago. They were uh, like an uncut diamond. I enrolled them in acting classes, dance lessons, voice lessons. Why? Because I knew they'd be big. It's like I got three Madonnas, you know? So I get this tape on my desk, right? I go, what the fuck is this? Relativity 3? Shit. And I hate fucking chick bands. So I tell my assistant, Margo, I said, lose the fucking tape. But Margo insists. So I play the thing. And it was like a fucking fungus. The shit just grows on you. And the rest is history. Four records, each one of them platinum, seven times over. The cover of Rolling Stone, three times, Television shows, movie deals, these girls are a fucking empire. Coordinating the look of Relativity 3 falls on our shoulders. Just a speck of information. She does the hair and I do the look. The hair is part of the look. I express expression on a daily basis. I have vision of the vision. And excuse me, but I have only too often offered to do a little spit curling here and there when needed. I can do the curls myself, thank you. I'm the hairdresser. E.G.O. The hair is just as important as the makeup. I would no sooner have you do their hair than I would do their makeup. <sighs> Over my dead body, you would. You can't even do your own face. 
What is that supposed to mean precisely? Well, Miss Kimberly Twinkie, <laughs> don't be a brat tat tatty little nuisance. What my partner doesn't seem to understand is that I don't have the time to primp in the mirror like some people all day long. <laughs> I have three heads of hair to do every day. Fly away, thin hair, barrettes, bows, gel, spray, mousse. It's just a little overwhelming, that's all. Don't call me Kimmy either. <laughs> Not that the girls were ready to make a record. Not by any means. We needed to get a team behind them. We're talking producers, songwriters, not to mention image makers and choreographers. Light! Creation! Pelvic linkage, sisters, sisterhood, dancing sister goddesses, swaying together, moving together, soul surfing at the ballet bar, 5 a.m. every morning. Choice Records spared no expense, and any good team needs a good visionary behind them. That's why they signed with me. I kind of feel that now we need to have a harder edge to reflect the society that we live in. You know, the collective psyche has a gigantic hole in it that I believe we can heal through our music. All while maintaining a light and airy feeling. Our common goal is working Relativity 3 and selling as many records as possible. While maintaining the integrity of the band. What I do is I handle all the day-to-day -day business, looking after their best interests and coordinating every aspect of their careers. And I keep the wheels turning at the label. Our in-house publicity and marketing departments are the best in the business. God, when it comes down to it, we're just one big happy family. Sure, we got our tips and we get into arguments, but at the end it all works out and we're pretty happy. The material for each new album is submitted by all the big publishers and it's a painstaking task because every songwriter from LA, New York and Nashville know that with one hit song and a Relativity 3 album, they can buy themselves a new house, possibly even a motorhome. If I could tell you just how much I love you, you know that I was sincere. As I run for the hills Whenever you are near And right there on near I do this big three part harmony like Near, near, near So, alright, Madonna and Whitney have both expressed interest in the song But I'm really hoping Relativity 3 picks it up Because I know someone, it'd be perfect for them I know someone whose cousin works for the promotion firm Doing the publicity for Australia So it's practically in the bag G. Energy, spirits, synergy. After the REM fiasco, I found it really difficult to get work. Seems producers aren't supposed to sue bands. Well, I did every fucking demo they did right up to the signing. I mean, it was my fucking demos that got them the deal. Then the cunts drop me like some sort of fucking hot potato as soon as they find out they can get some hot shot fucking knob twiddler to record the first album. I'm out, he's in. I had every right to sue. The record industry treats me like I'm some sort of leper. Well, bollocks to that. So when Serge calls me, I was quite surprised really after all the crap we'd been through together on the whole demos I did. Yeah, our plan was to make this more than just a regular Relativity 3 album. You know, we wanted something new, something exciting, something, you know, powerful. Well, so I came up with this idea to do like a concert Actually, album. we both came up with the idea at the same time. Well, like sort of a pop opera. Yeah, like a Sgt. Pepper, or, you know, a Tommy. Yeah, we began like working on the ideas and, you know, we got really excited about the whole thing. Yeah, you know, it's like, it's a story about a young lady who decides that she wants to go to the convent to become a nun. The possibilities for material you know, is like endless. The, the, the conflict of emotion, the... Questioning religion, sex, a whole role in the big picture. But, you know, if it, is it really important if she does go to the convent to become a nun or should she just, you know, finish high school and go to junior college like everyone else? That's, you know, the thing. What it comes down to is he's, he's a genius, true brilliance, I mean, yeah, sure. He's had his, you know, bum deals, the one in with the law, you know, the coke bust and all, but you know what I say? Who the fuck hasn't had their nuts in a vice once in a while? All right? 
I wasn't sure if I could really deal with this sweetness of Relativity 3. But after meeting the girls, I thought, well, to hell with all that. And I'd be fucking nuts to turn down this sort of money anyway. He seems to really understand and appreciate women. And that's extremely important to me as a female artist. I mean, I need someone who's sensitive to my feelings, needs, desires. And Graham has what it takes to make me happy. In the studio, I mean. See, what people don't seem to understand is Relativity 3 is no longer a trio of cute little girls singing cute little songs about unicorns and rainbows and boyfriends. We're women now, and we feel the need to sing about important issues, you know, issues that affect all of us. Abortion, rape, homelessness. I mean, those issues don't affect us, but they affect, you know, the universal us, the public, whatever. I mean, you know what I mean. It's just that I'm so fucking sick of singing about non-issues. There's a lot of angry people out there. Graham is a Scorpio. Strong, sensual, sexual. In keeping with our desire to have a more grown-up image, I had his chart done along with all the other producers we were considering. It was very revealing, and for me, it decided the issue. You see, Moon in Capricorn, stable. Venus in Leo, passionate. Sun in Aquarius, he's able to see the whole picture. Perfect profile for a record producer. Most important thing in the world is the girls love them. And whatever the girls love, they get. So Relativity 3, in my opinion, has to move more carefully with this new, tougher image. I mean, America's sweethearts can't suddenly emerge with a mohawk and tattoos now, can they? No. It's got to be more, more subliminal. That's where a producer can subtly alter the buying public's idea on a band. It's quite sneaky, really. Oh, Jesus Christ, rock and religion have been intertwined longer than either would like to admit. The Beatles got religion, the Who had that Mayhar Baba, and Salt and Pepper thanked the Lord after they receive every Grammy. Well, Relativity 3 has the opportunity to appeal to millions of Catholics the world over. Our demographic research shows that if only 20% of the world Catholics bought the single Mother Teresa, the label would net, Jesus God, well over $65 million. And that doesn't even count all the merchandising. I mean, we're talking rosaries, crucifixes, Bibles that the girls have autographed. Truly is amazing. Makes Batman look like nothing. Mother Teresa is a more palatable version of Gandhi. Easier to get airplay. Well, at least that's how it was explained to me. You see, I personally have a very big problem with the Catholic Church. I suppose they do some good, but on the whole, I find it to be a very suppressive religion. Well, that's why I became a Hindu. You see, in my religion, all people are embraced. And in being true to my teachings, I must embrace Mother Teresa as my sister. But if she pulls any of that no birth control crap on me, I'll tell her where she can stick it. The waves rush over me Covering my body with salty water I am the earth mother The sky sister The sea This one would really appeal to them, particularly Summer, who's into the Universal Consciousness Movement, which I'm also a member of. I'm not really a member, but I agree with most of what they say. Yeah, it's, wow. it's, you know, it's really, it's a nice meditative spot here. Good, that's this is good. supposed to Just make you feel better? To open up and, oh, well. The logistics of this thing are enormous! All right, this tour is going to be the biggest tour in the history of pop music. We've got a multi-million dollar lighting rig, 25 individual spots each, not to mention the lasers. I mean, the insurance alone would break the Rolling Stones. Now, we're going to be kicking off the tour at the Vatican for the Mother Teresa tribute album. Right, imagine this, the Pope, the Sistine Chapel, and 63 trucks full of gear. This is great. I can't believe it. The Vatican! Oh, this is just the ultimate for me. I always thought that I'd meet the Pope and him and Mother Teresa. Oh, it's just too much. Oh, God, is my friend's blue running? Oh, oh, oh. Wait, come on.
come on, it's not like I'm anti-charity for Christ's sakes. I give to dozens of charities every year. Well, yeah, the accountant says I have to, but that's not why I do it. Uh-huh. Yeah, but wait, this Mother Teresa thing, it's just... I mean, couldn't we do one for the homeless or breast cancer or something, you know, more modern? Oh. Oh, the actual Pope is going to be there. 500,000 people in the courtyard of the Vatican? My God, I thought it was going to be some little thing, but if half those people buy the record, that would make us gold in Italy, wouldn't it? Italy, could you ask for anything more? The first thing I want to do when I get to Vatican City is go to the best restaurant there and sample all their pastas. Maybe I can steal one of their chefs. I'm thinking of starting a cafe of my own. I can picture it now, small but chic, outdoorsy but romantic, violins, great music, and of course, all the waiters are male models. Kind of like the Claudia Schiffer thing in New York. No, cool, Cubby, absolutely. Do that. You got the other things handled? Okay. Wait a minute, hold on. Get out of here. Get out of here a minute. Just get, can you get, excuse me, can you move, please? Thank you. Jesus Christ. What do you mean they're following the Pope? You can't follow the Pope, for God's sake, Cubby. No, it, no, it's worse than following Hendrix at Woodstock. It doesn't work. No, the Pope has to close the show, Cubby. What, what the fuck? What are you talking about? What do you mean it's bedtime? No, I have no idea how old he is. Jesus Christ, he's that old? Okay, um... Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, you know what, cancel boys to men and we're gonna we're gonna close the show a half hour early. That's what we have to do. Okay. Call the Vatican. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Good. Fuck. God. What are you still doing here? You didn't get that, did you? You don't have to do it. You can't wait until you marry. It's okay to tell him no, and if he leaves you, he'll be sorry. Da -da 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 -da. This is um, in sort of keeping in with that pro-virginity movement that Liz Fair and all them were into. And I think Relativity 3 could really use that as a platform for lots of publicity. Not that they need the publicity, but, you know, it's like an issue to sort of exploit. Well, I've been instructed by my attorneys not to discuss the details of this case, but I will state once again for the record, my voice is on all the Relativity 3 albums from the very beginning on. From Between Sisters to last year's Blood is Thicker Than Water and the remake of We Are Family. My voice was digitally blended with their voices to give them the richness and fullness they simply don't have on their own. Nicole bought a venture? She's a scheming, conniving, headline stealing, lying bitch. That's what she is. Relativity 3, they sing their own songs. They always have and they always will be. Our attorneys have given her every opportunity to save the embarrassment and the cost of a jury trial. If she wants to fuck with us, I say let the bloodbath begin. All I'm asking for, all I've ever asked for, is to be given my due credit and several hundred thousand dollars in royalty payments that I believe I'm entitled to. Rafe told me we settled that out of court months ago. That case was settled out of court months ago. We're getting sued? So uh, you met Relativity 3 at their uh, concert at Royal Albert Hall, right? Yeah, I was on tour there last year and went backstage and checked them out. Well, it seems kind of odd that uh, you'd want to meet them. I mean, your music is like so, so different from theirs. Well, I really wasn't interested in the music. I mean, they're not all... I was pretty much interested in the clothes. <laughs> the clothes? Yeah, they wear these really cool velvet and rubber jackets. And, you know, I just wanted to see if they would let me borrow one. They're pretty cool. Well, well evidently it caused quite a fuss. But yeah, the, the middle one, Jane, she was cool with the whole thing. But the older one started yelling something about kowtowing to the male establishment. <laughs> and then the younger one started, she just got down on her knees and started chanting. Oh my God. Well, uh, the British press had a field day with that one, I think. Yeah, well, the whole thing, I mean, there was photographers from, from their label and from mine, but the whole thing got pretty much blown away out of proportion. I mean, fuck, I can buy my own jacket. I just wanted to see if they'd give me one of theirs. Yeah, right. Cool. Beautiful, yeah, thank you, guys. We got tons of mileage out of that tray incident. You know, the girls eventually calmed down, and by the time the whole thing was over, you literally couldn't have bought the publicity that we got. It was fantastic. Um, everything's really fine now. Trey is truly, truly a great artist. I knew this, though, years ago when I saw him at this After Hours Club in L.A. Truly brilliant. He was like um, Tower of Power, but without the horns. 
Tough Cookie has sort of that tongue-in-cheek viewpoint that's cute and sassy all at the same time. I used to stay up real late and run around with the gang. I wear my skirts too short to school, sometimes I'd play hooky. My daddy, he would punish me and send me to bed early. But I tell him you gotta understand, I'm not bad, oh daddy dear. I'm a tough cookie. Tough cookie! It's cute, huh? Listen, there's absolutely no truth to the rumor that the girls are arguing with or about Graham Pennyworthington. In fact, the picture in the studio here is nothing but of serenity. And, you know, everyone involved couldn't be happier. Well, it's not like we were uh, unhappy with it, necessarily. What are you talking about? Of course we are. What Graham didn't seem to grasp was our true desires. You know, it's really odd for a man with his rising sign in Libra. There's reverb all over the place. It's not like we can't sing or anything. sometimes I'm not so good. Yeah, and, and when he said more guitars, who knew he was talking about acoustic? I guess we should have been there when the musicians were recording the tracks. I always said we should be more hands-on. Well, you know, we did have other things to do, Jane. You know, we had those costume fittings, publicity shoots, meeting with the Archbishop. Mm -hmm. Well, Rafe and Sergei said that all isn't lost. Rafe and Sergei always say that. Rafe and Sergei have never been wrong, have they? Well, you know, they put that call into Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. That's right, and if we can get them to come in, remix, beef up the tracks before the release date, it's an if. They're doing Debbie Gibson's record right now. She is so lame. She is so... Oh, God, she's I know. Bad. What is the deal? I, I don't get it. Stone and I met backstage at one of the girls' concerts. It was an immediate attraction. Wasn't it? Huh? She was she was so hot. I can't oh, even oh. tell you. No, no, I've always dug older older uh, chicks. Man, well, but. come on. I'm old enough to be your aunt. I was Sister. <laughs> Sister, okay? <laughs> Oh, honey, oh, show them, show them your tongue piercing. Oh, the tongue? Yeah. I didn't like it at first. It opened up options. Did you see his tongue? I knew it. She has him show it to everyone. The girls are very happy at Choice Records. They're comfortable with the staff here, and they know this is the best place for them to continue their recording careers. I don't think there's any doubt that they'll be renewing their contract with Choice Records. In fact, I think it's a given. Yeah, our contract's up in October, and we're thinking about moving with Virgin. You know, it's not that we're unhappy with Choice Records. It's just that we think, you know, a new label could re-spark some of that fire that's gone out of Choice. You know, Virgin's already made some preliminary inquiries in signing the girls, you know, and uh, we're in very, very close contact with them. Very, very happy about that. This is, this is like Apocalypse Now here. You know, we're going to have helicopters and the Philippine Army in here in a second. Okay, let's get hypothetical for a moment, shall we? Suppose your skin is all oily and gross like Efren's. <laughs> or summer. Videos, MTV, mass appeal. Yes, we're doing it all. Yes, we are. Give me three steps, give me three steps, give me three steps. Give me three steps. Oh, yeah. amazing. Well, I, you know, I'm, have yeah. you seen some of my stuff? Yeah, yeah, I saw the weatherman. Yeah, just give me a moment here, please. You what? saw the weatherman? Yeah, yeah. That was did you, great. Did you see the last time I did the... the I saw yeah. bits of it. It's great. Hey. I mean, fuck, I can buy my own jacket. I just wanted one of theirs. No, no, I've always dug older, older uh, chicks, man. Well, I know. Very much.
muffin. Thanks. Thanks a lot. You're very welcome. Yeah, what is, some watermelon. Do you some strawberries? Uh, no, no. Allegra. Allegra, hi. How well, are you? I don't need to know your name. Uh, I, I know it already. Uh, Mr. Golding. Yeah. Well, well, then, well, Would you like some grapes? Fresh strawberries, uh, maybe? No, I think well, this is a little golden. Just take a minute here. Coffee? Is your coffee fresh? Yes, the coffee's great. It's fine. I just got it for Yeah. God damn it, I'm sorry. Choice roll. Choice Records, is that the one that yeah, I'm flubbing up? Okay. Still rolling. Still rolling. Still rolling. Fuck. Oh. You wanna put it on? Is it on? Good. That is not Michael. Yes, that is Michael. It's 15 years old. It's Michael. That is not Michael. You Mother, are, that's Michael. You're so stubborn. If that's Michael Jackson, I'm LaToya. Couldn't help myself. Is that okay? I say we got a winner, huh? Absolutely. Even though I know I should. I think we got it. I think, I think it's a take. Really good. I think it's a take. I like that one.